Combustion and Flame Introduction In the Stone Age, people never knew the use of fire. They used to eat raw food. It was by accident they found that by rubbing two stones, fire can be produced. They found that cooked food tastes better. Slowly, they started using dried twigs, coal, kerosene and then gas to make fire. These on burning not only produced heat but also light. Burning of a substance to give heat and light is called combustion. Combustion is a chemical reaction in which heat and light are produced. Example, heated magnesium ribbon. When introduced into a jar of oxygen, burns, producing heat and dazzling white light. 2 mg plus O2 gives 2 mg O plus heat light. Combustible substances. When paper, cloth or wood comes into contact with fire, it burns. They are combustible. Try to do the same with a spoon, a glass piece or water. They do not catch fire and hence are non-combustible. Substances which burn when brought into contact with fire are called combustible substances and those which do not burn are said to be non-combustible. Supporter of combustion. Light a candle, invert a glass tumbler over it. What happens? It burns for a little while and then is put out. The candle burns by taking the oxygen of air. Once the oxygen is over, it is put out as the remaining gases like nitrogen, carbon dioxide do not support combustion. This principle is made use of in electric bulbs which are filled with non-combustible gases like nitrogen and argon to prevent the filament from burning. It is not only oxygen which supports combustion but oxides of nitrogen and chlorine also support combustion. Ignition Temperature A substance that catches fire very easily is said to have a low ignition temperature or kindling temperature. They are called inflammable materials. Cooking gas, petrol and white phosphorus have low ignition temperatures. Materials like wood and coal have high ignition temperatures. The ignition temperature of a material is defined as the lowest temperature at which it catches fire. Rapid combustion. Combustion that takes place at a very fast rate is called rapid combustion. LPG, liquefied petroleum gas and dry grass are examples of substances which undergo rapid combustion. Sometimes a large volume of gas is liberated in combustion besides the production of heat and light. The sudden evolution of large quantities of gas creates excessive pressure that produces a loud noise. Such a combustion is known as an explosion. The bursting of crackers and the shot of a gun are examples of explosion. Slow combustion. Combustion that takes place at a slow rate with steady production of heat and light is called slow combustion. Burning of coal and rusting of iron involves slow combustion. In fact, respiration and digestion are also slow combustions. Spontaneous combustion. Oil paints, when thrown into a closed container or garage, spontaneously catch fire. The same phenomenon occurs in a haystack fire. Bacteria present in the hay cause slow oxidation of the organic material of the hay, resulting in the release of heat. When ignition temperature is reached, the hay catches fire. Combustion that occurs without the supply of external thermal energy is called spontaneous combustion. Incomplete combustion. Burn a candle. Hold a china dish over it. A deposit of soot is formed. This soot is nothing but carbon which has not undergone combustion. Incomplete combustion takes place when camphor is burned. Incomplete combustion therefore results in formation of poisonous carbon monoxide, deposition of soot, efficiency of the fuel is less as it does not produce the maximum amount of heat. 
Methods of Putting Out Fire Fire is a good servant but a bad master. Despite the best of care, fire sometimes breaks out in homes, schools, forests, theatres, slums, etc. Not only is there extensive destruction of property but often many precious lives are lost in fire accidents. Thus, the methods of extinguishing fire are very important. What are the steps to be taken for putting out a fire? Break the contact of the combustible substance with the fire. Stop the supply of the supporter of combustion. Cool the burning substance below its ignition temperature. Sand and water are usually thrown on burning matter to extinguish fire. Sand covers the fire and cuts off the supply of air. Water cools the object and brings its temperature below its ignition temperature. Water also cuts off the supply of air, the supporter of combustion. Fire extinguishers You must have seen fire extinguishers kept in schools, theatres, hospitals, business places, etc. Fire extinguishers are devices used to put off an accidental fire. They are painted red for easy identification. Let us now consider the various types of fire extinguishers that are effective for different types of fire. Sodium bicarbonate fire extinguisher. It consists of a large cone-shaped steel vessel containing a strong solution of sodium bicarbonate NaHCO3 or solid bicarbonate. The bottom of the vessel is fitted with a metal plunger and a bottle of concentrated sulfuric acid. When in need, bang the knob or plunger at the bottom. It breaks the bottle containing the acid. The acid reacts with sodium bicarbonate solution, releasing carbon dioxide, which comes out through the nozzle and puts out the fire. Sodium bicarbonate plus sulfuric acid gives sodium sulfate plus water plus carbon dioxide. 2NaHCO3 plus H2SO4 gives Na2SO4 plus 2H2O plus 2CO2. Liquid CO2 fire extinguishers Soda acid type This is very effective as a household fire extinguisher. A cross section of this fire extinguisher is shown in figure. A strong solution of sodium bicarbonate is kept in a metallic container just above which a bottle of concentrated sulfuric acid is positioned. When the knob is struck, the acid bottle breaks and the sodium bicarbonate solution comes into contact with the concentrated sulfuric acid. This produces CO2. 2NaHCO3 plus H2SO4 gives Na2SO4 plus 2H2O plus CO2. The carbon dioxide produced is ejected at the nozzle under pressure together with the solution in the container. The carbon dioxide smothers the flame whereas the water from NaHCO3 solution has a cooling effect on the burning material. Characteristics of a good fuel It must be easily available and inexpensive. It should be easy and safe to handle. It should be convenient to store and transport. The waste products of its combustion such as smoke, soot and ash should be minimum. It should produce a large amount of heat in proportion to its weight. It should have a low ignition temperature. On combustion it should not produce toxic products. Calorific value of a fuel. The calorific value of the fuel is the amount of heat produced when 1 kg of the fuel is burnt completely in oxygen. More calorific value, better is the fuel. Types of fuels. Fuels are classified as solids, liquids and gaseous fuels. Solid fuel, wood, coal, coke. Liquid fuel, kerosene, petrol, diesel, alcohol. Gaseous fuel, water gas, producer gas, coal gas, natural gas, LPG, biogas. Solid fuels, wood, coal, coke and paraffin wax 
are some important solid fuels. Wood has been a traditional fuel. Of late, however, there has been an increasing awareness that felling of trees for fuel could prove to be an environmental hazard. Coal is available in plenty in India. Coal is used directly as fuel or for the production of more valuable types of fuels such as coal gas and coke. Paraffin wax is obtained during distillation of petroleum. It contains a mixture of heavier hydrocarbons. It is used in the manufacture of candles. Combustion and light. Natural gas or marsh gas. This is formed in marshy areas. It consists of a mixture of methane and ethane. LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. The commercial fuel marketed as indane is a mixture of butane and propane. Mercaptans are added to the LPG to detect leaks. Gober gas or biogas. This gas is obtained by the bacterial action on cattle dung and water in circular pits in the absence of air. Methane and ethane are the main constituents of gober gas. This fuel is becoming increasingly popular in villages because it is inexpensive.